Guys, we made it. It is transfer deadline day. Loads to talk over. Let's jump into it all. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and to another episode of the Championship Transfer Rumor Roundup. Now, loads is going to continue to develop as the day goes on. More stories will have come out by the time that you guys are watching this. But we are here today to round up all the deals that have gone through so far as of recording today's video and also dive into some of the transfer rumors as well. Make sure to get all your thoughts in the comments down below. As we head into the final hours of deadline day, who are you hopeful your club will still get a deal over the line for? As always, if you do go to enjoy, make sure to to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. We'll have a few full transfer review coming out in the next few days. But without any further ado, let's hop into some of the done deals. Of course, we saw Randy Carroll moving over to West Brom, made his debut at the weekend after the injury to Daryl DK, Jordan Hugel going back um, from his loan spell as well. Quite the blow there for Reading losing Andy Carroll, who they had on a short-term basis for the first portion of the season. But as a stopgap option to sort of fill the void while Daryl DK is out, I don't think that's all too bad if, you, if they manage to keep him fair. We saw Cardiff learning Alfie Doherty from Stoke. They were in need of a little bit more depth on that left-hand side, particularly with, you know, Giles um, being recalled, having another option on that left-hand side. And Doherty, who's not played all too much football so far this season, so looks like a decent move for the rest of the season. Joe Carvalho has moved to Olympiacos on a permanent basis. I think that all the Forest fans knew that this was coming, and... A little part of everyone a little bit gutted as well, I feel like, because it's not worked out for Carvalho at Nottingham Forest. There were glimpses, particularly in that first season, of absolute brilliance, but it's always just felt that each of the managers that have been at Forest haven't always been the best fit for Carvalho. So an eventual move away from the club was probably always going to be on the cards, but you can't help but feel like it's maybe a little bit of, of a case of, you know, wasted potential because there was a cracking player in there at one point. We saw Jordan Hugo complete his loan move to Cardiff for the rest of the season and he got on the score sheet for his debut against Forest at the weekend as well. Didn't really happen for him at West Brom, but looks like he might be a better systematic fit into this Cardiff side. And we saw Blackburn completed the deal for Aberdeen's Ryan Hedges. This one had been long talked about. We discussed this transfer rumour in quite a few previous videos that we've done throughout the month. But Blackburn getting this deal over the line looks like it ticks a lot of boxes. Another creative player coming into that side. We've seen plenty of Jamal Blackman in the championship and he's back now with Huddersfield. Tino Andrin has joined Huddersfield on loan for the rest of the season from Chelsea. Once again Huddersfield using the loan market really well here. Preston have completed the signing of Bambo Diaby. He's coming in for the rest of this season. We had him on trial for, I think, the last couple of months now, but with Jordan's story going out on loan, this one makes sense. But there are some of the completed deals that we've seen go through in the championship so far. Now, without any further ado, let's hop into the rumours. So, Cardiff is still in the market for another striker. The other day, they had a loan bid rejected for Preston forward, Shawnee Maguire. They're trying to rekindle that um, I think 17-18 partnership that Preston had between Maguire and Hugel, but uh, Preston reportedly turning this one down. They were also not back for an approach for Bristol City's Naki Wells also, with Bristol City seemingly want him, wanting to keep him around for at least the rest of the season. But one deal they could get over the line today is for Stoke City's Sam Surridge on a loan deal for the rest of the season. Surridge has been a bit of a weird one really because the transfer move to Stoke hasn't really worked out like I'm sure a lot of Stoke fans would have been hoping been for seem to have a fairly bright start to life there but as time has gone on he's sort of just been dwindling there really hasn't he um, a lot of his appearances I think coming off the bench this season and he's fallen down more and more down the pecking order as time's gone on and potentially we Stoke bringing in another forward today as well this may see Surridge going out on loan. And one deal which is looking to get over the line is Stoke signing Josh Madger. Obviously, this will then have a knock-on effect for the Sam Surridge loan deal. This reportedly on the loan deal until the end of the season, and then Stoke will have the option to go ahead and buy the current fee being talked about around about that 3.5 million mark at this point. But Josh Madger, I'm a big fan of really. Ever since his Sunderland days, had that loan spell at Fulham last season in the Premier League where I thought he looked pretty sharp for them, to be honest. And a move to a championship club like Stoke seems like a really good deal. Stoke certainly not giving up on their top six pursuit this season. And with other players returning from injuries, they'll be looking to end the season quite strongly. And maybe even, you know, go ahead and sneak back into the top six. Sheffield United reportedly won't stand in the way of Luke Freeman if a bid comes in for him later on today. Now, Luton have been linked with a move for the Sheffield United midfielder. And 
honestly, I think this could suit both parties. Freeman hasn't really played all too much so far this season, just four championship appearances in total, three of those coming off the bench as well. Freeman's always been someone who... I've held in quite high regard really, but the move to Sheffield United has never really quite clicked um, how Blades fans would have been hoping for. And a side like Luton, the sort of football they play to add a little bit more creativity into that midfield, I think this could be a really good move. Front end coming at Sheffield United though, it appears like Charlie Good will be a deal which they do manage to get over the line today. This one makes sense, adds a little bit more depth into that central defensive area. He's played just six league matches for Brentford so far this season, so a move seen more than likely in January. Next up, let's head into to the Bournemouth news because we've got a bunch to talk over in terms of their current incomings and who they're currently being linked to. It look, it's looking like a deal for Keith and Moore will get over the line today with a fee of around about £3.5 million being agreed between the two clubs. Keith and Moore and Bournemouth have been linked with each other for quite some time now. We spoke about this transfer rumour on quite a few previous videos but with Cardiff and their situation, you know, they've got Hugo Lynn looking to get another striker in. It seemed like it was going to be more than likely that Moore would be departing. And he does have something a little bit different to that forward line that Bournemouth maybe have been lacking recently. It's also looking like Nat Phillips is going to be on the move and to Bournemouth as well with a loan deal set to be put in place for this one. Now Nat Phillips hasn't played all too much football for Liverpool so far this season but did really well when given his opportunity to be fair last season when he had to step in with all the absences they had in that position and a move to a top championship club like Bournemouth for the rest of the season looked once again like a really good deal. It also looks like they've got a loan deal done for goalkeeper Freddie Woodman coming on loan for the rest of the season from Newcastle. Woodman, the player who we've seen have a couple of terrific seasons at championship level, both with Swansea. Interesting that they're going in for a goalkeeper though, because, I mean, from the outside looking in, I think that Travers has done a pretty good job in that position for them. But I suppose this adds a little bit more competition, but it will be very interesting to see who sort of plays there for the rest of the season because Woodman's no doubt top quality championship goalkeeper. Sticking with Bournemouth, it's also looking like they're keen to get a deal over the line for Norwich's Todd Cantwell. They are seriously adding both attacking and defensive reinforcements of real quality into this squad on deadline day. Now, for whatever reason, things haven't worked out for Cantwell this season. Uh, towards the end under Daniel Fark, there seemed to be an issue, and even since Dean Smith has come in, that hasn't really been able to galvanise Cantwell as a player at Norwich. His opportunities have been, albeit, Fairly few and far between for Norwich so far this season. I think he's appeared in just uh, seven Premier League matches for them. But even so, I think Norwich fans would have been quite disappointed with how this season has ultimately unfolded with Cantwell. There's no doubt in my mind now, though, that in terms of natural ability and talent, he's more than good enough to be a top top end championship player and speaking of attacking talent they are still not giving up on a deal for Peterborough Siriki Dembele Dembele is and we spoke about this one in the last transfer room around the video but He's really caught the eye of quite a few clubs uh, so far this season. He's quite a unique talent really when it comes to that Peterborough squad and undoubtedly would be a massive miss um, if this deal does get done and over the line his contract is running out at the end of the season, remember. And with all those potential deals for Bournemouth on the cards, it's now looking like Joe Rodwell could be sticking it out at Blackburn for the rest of the season. Blackburn have already turned down two bids for Rodwell who wasn't involved in the squad um, at the weekend against Luton. But I'm sure that story will continue to develop throughout the day as well. In terms of an incoming for Blackburn though, they are hot on the heels of Wolves' is Ryan Giles and are hopeful to get a loan deal over the line today. Now he obviously spent the first half of the season out on loan at Cardiff where he was absolutely brilliant, got nine assists in the first half of the season. He can play a variety, a variety of positions down that left hand side. I'd go as far to say that he's one of, if not the best crossers of the ball in the league. Got an abundance of pace about him as well and I think will be a really good fit in at Blackburn for the rest of the season. Ollie Norburn has been heavily linked with a move to Blackpool as well with the Seasiders already having one bid turned down. He was left out of their squad over the weekend, Darren Ferguson claiming that due to an injury but we also saw that with Dembele. Uh, if they were to lose both Norburn and Dembele today, I mean that would be a massive hammer blow for Peterborough's survival hopes. Norburn who's probably been I'd say one of Peterborough's more consistent players throughout the season so far. It's been no secret that Blackpool have been after at least one holding midfielder for pretty much the whole window, so they'll be desperate to try and get a deal done today. In terms of other midfield targets for Blackpool, they're not giving up on a move for Cameron Brannigan, and I'm sure this is a transfer story which is going to continue to rumble on throughout the day. They've reportedly put in an improved offer 
for Brondigan. I'm losing track of how many bids they put in for him now, but he scored four penalties at the weekend for Oxford, which was um, a little bit crazy. But no doubt he's a player that Blackpool have had their eye on for quite some time. Now it'll be interesting to see if they get either of those deals done. Millwall are the latest championship club looking to land a deal for Middlesbrough's Uchik Piazzu. This one, I think, ticks a few boxes, particularly with the players that have recently departed from Millwall. You know, John Daly Budvardson going out, Matt Smith especially, another player to come in in that sort of target man fold would be someone like Ike Piazzo in terms of play style and things like that. Looks like it'd be a decent fit at Millwall. Swansea have reportedly turned down a third bid from QPR for attacking midfielder Jamie Patterson with Swansea's valuation set at around about the 750k mark. Now this one has all been a little bit of a sticky situation really if you've been following it over the last month or so. Jamie Patterson unhappy with the terms on a contract extension which was um, I think an automatic clause of his contract. He was hoping for a little bit of a bump up in some terms but that's not been the case so it did seem like it was more than likely that he would be leaving in January but with their valuation not yet being met of the player it looks like he could be there to stay if nothing it happens over the next few hours with this one. Barnsley have been the latest championship club to be linked to Watford's Domingos Queen and now we spoke about this one in the most recent transfer rumour roundup video with some other championship clubs who were interested in him. Uh, so far he's been on loan at Fulham but hasn't really got all too many opportunities there. I'd be amazed if Barnsley managed to get that deal over the line though. I would have thought that you know, some other clubs, maybe higher up the pecking order at the moment, would beat them to it. But uh, yeah, that would be a real sign if they did get that one done. Today we should get a conclusion to the Jed Wallace transfer speculation as well, linking him to Nottingham Forest. Now, as of recording, the latest news that we've got available is that Nottingham Forest have put another bid in for the Millwall winger, and it waits to be seen whether or not they'll go ahead and accept it. And today we should also get a conclusion to the Josh Bowler transfer saga, with Nottingham Forest already having, I think it's three bids turned down for the Blackpool winger. We should get some clarity on this one later down the line today as well. Fulham have been another clip club link to the Blackpool star. Several championship clubs are being linked with the move for Newcastle's Dwight Gale with the striker reportedly being ava made available for a loan move. Now it wouldn't be a transfer deadline day without Dwight Gale being linked to a championship move. Several championship clubs reportedly interested in him, also including Nottingham Forest who have recently lost Lewis Grabin to that injury. Another striker that Nottingham Forest had been linked to was Bristol City's Anthony Semenyo who was absolutely brilliant at the weekend against Preston at Deepdale and must have it. But with Bristol City said to value the youngster at around about 20 million, Nottingham Forest's uh, bid for him was said to fall way short of that sort of valuation. And it's looking like there could be quite a few outgoings at Newcastle today, with Jeff Hendrick popping up on the radar for Middlesbrough ahead of a potential loan deal for the rest of the season. And someone who could be following him to Middlesbrough is Kieran Clark, who also seems to be on the radar of Middlesbrough as another left sided defender coming in. But guys, there we have it. That will not wrap it up for today's video. As always is the case on Transfer Deadline Day, loads of stories will continue to develop and new stories will come out throughout the day. So make sure to get all your thoughts on all the current ongoings in the comments down below. Which positions do you still think your club needs to go ahead and strengthen? But apart from that, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to leave a like if you want to enjoy. And I'll see you all in the next one.